Dupuytren's contracture is a progressive hand disorder characterized by gradual thickening and tightening of fibrous tissue in the palm, leading to the bending of one or more fingers towards the palm, restricting their full extension. This condition predominantly affects the ring and little finger and can impair hand function, making everyday tasks challenging. The exact cause of Dupuytren's contracture remain unclear, though it is believed to involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. The condition is more common in individuals of Northern European descent and tends to run in families, suggesting a hereditary component. Environmental factors such as alcohol use, smoking and diabetes have also been associated with an increased risk of developing this condition. Dupuytren's contracture results from abnormal proliferation of myofibroblasts. If we look at a normal palm, you can see that it's made up of epithelial cells, fat, and connective tissue. In Dupuytren's contracture, you get abnormal proliferation of myofibroblasts in the palm of fascia, the fibrous layer beneath the skin of the palm. These cells then produce a lot of collagen and other extracellular matrix components, leading to the formation of nodules and cords that can gradually contract and pull the finger towards the palm, creating that flexion deformity. Let's look at the clinical features. The onset of Dupuytren's contracture is typically gradual, starting with development of nodules in the palm, which may or may not be painful. As the condition progresses over time, these nodules can extend to form thick, fibrous cords extending into the fingers. The contracture of these cords leads to the characteristic flexion deformity of the affected fingers. Patients often report difficulty in performing tasks that require a flat hand, such as putting on gloves or shaking hands. In advanced cases, the contractor can significantly impair hand function. There are other differential diagnoses to consider in someone who has something like Dupuytren's contractor, and this includes what's called a trigger finger. Trigger finger. In both these conditions, they involve the hand and can restrict finger movement. However, in trigger finger, it's characterized by locking or catching of a finger in a bent position due to inflammation of the flexor tendon sheath. A ganglion cyst is another differential and arises near tendons or joints of the wrist or hands. It really potentially causes a lump like structure, similar to the nodules of Dupuytren's contracture. However, these lumps are cysts and are fluid filled, whereas Dupuytren's nodules are solid, fibrous tissue. Another differential is diabetic karyoarthropathy. It's seen in patients with long-standing diabetes, and in this condition, it causes stiffness and thickening of the skin of the hands. The key distinguishing feature is the prayer sign, indicating that the person is unable to oppose the palms and fingers due to the skin and soft tissue being stiff. It's really the whole hand. Volkmann's contracture is a deformity caused by ischemia in the forearm muscles, leading to contractures. Unlike Dupuytren's, Volkmann's contracture is typically the result of acute injury, sudden injury, and affects the forearm muscles, leading to a claw-like deformity of the hand. Finally, another differential is scleroderma. Scleroderma is basically when you have skin thickening and tightening, 
across various parts of the body, including the hands, which might mimic Dupuytren's. But really, in scleroderma, it's all the fingers and the hands that become tight. As well, you can get tightening elsewhere around the body, such as legs, feet, as well as organs, internal organs. The diagnosis of Dupuytren's contracture is primarily clinical, based on the characteristic appearance and symptoms. The tabletop test is where the patient is unable to lay their hands flat on the table. It can be a useful diagnostic tool. Imaging studies are not typically required, but may be used to assess the extent of the disease in severe cases. Remember, the most common fingers affected are really the ring finger and the little finger. The treatment of Dupuytren's contracture is aimed at improving hand function and may include observation, especially in mild cases when the deformity has not much impact on hand function. Then there is something called needle aponeurotomy, a minimally invasive procedure where a needle is used to puncture and break the fibrous cords that have formed, allowing for improved finger extension. This procedure can be performed in an outpatient setting with local anesthesia. Then there's something called collagenase injection. In this procedure, collagenase clostridium histolyticum is injected into the fibrous cord. This causes enzymatic breakdown of the collagen, allowing the cord to be disrupted and the finger to straighten. This method may require manipulation of the finger by the healthcare provider the day following the injection to achieve the desired effect. Finally, surgery. And this is particularly reserved for severe cases or recurrent cases. Surgical options include fasciotomy, where the fibrous tissue is surgically removed, or in very severe cases, dermofasciotomy, which involves the removal of both the affected skin and the underlying fibrous tissue, sometimes requiring skin grafting. The progression of Dupuytren's contracture can vary significantly among individuals. Some may experience only mild symptoms with little progression over time, while others may develop severe contracture requiring surgical intervention. Complications of Dupuytren's contracture are primarily related to loss of hand function and the potential for recurrence after treatment. In summary, Dupuytren's contracture is a condition that leads to a progressive hand deformity and functional impairment through the contracture of the palmar fascia. While the exact cause is not fully understood, a combination of genetic predisposition and environmental factors are believed to play a role. Treatment options vary from observation and minimally invasive procedures to surgery, depending on the severity of the condition and its impact on the person's quality of life. Thank you.